Do not trust this company. The state of wholesale real estate. More states and cities are now requiring wholesalers to either hold a license or to provide some sort of disclosures in order to wholesale real estate. I'm going to share my screen with you all and discuss a new state that's going to require wholesalers to provide some sort of disclosure or license and just talk about how they're experiencing wholesalers in their state. I'm also going to talk about the real estate market and real estate genre in general because there has been a lot of shady articles um, coming out um, discussing real estate in general and about shady people in this industry ripping off homeowners, you know, having them sign quick claim deeds and the seller doesn't understand what they're signing, right? Taking advantage of elderly, older women or elderly people that don't understand, which I do not agree with at all. And I see that this affects wholesalers. This affects people who are genuinely trying to help people sell their home, trying to make a business for themselves. But these few bad apples in all parts of real estate, um, not just wholesaling, affects real estate in general. So I'm just going to discuss that. Let me know your thoughts down below. Be sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to this channel. Okay, so I, I sort of discussed this article, but it was specifically for Indiana, but there's uh, this area between Indiana and Kentucky called, if I can pronounce this correctly, K Kentuckiana, Kentuckiana, right? <sighs> wholesalers getting contracts on homes across K Kentuckiana, and in most cases, the wholesalers don't doesn't put any money on the line. While this is not a scam, like they're saying, some homeowners are learning it's an offer that's missing important information and in thousands of dollars. Chris West is a broker, associate of Remax, first in Jeffersonville. She is concerned after finding a wholesaler at a recent listing appointment. Okay, so a wholesaler shows up to a listing appointment um, because you can wholesale properties that are listed. He called me later and told me that they did, in fact, sign a contract. Hmm. The home is on Maple Street in Jeffersonville and owned by an elderly lady who wants to downsize. It is very sad, Wes said. Wes said. Now, granted, Wes is protecting her business and she is looking out for her own business, right? And so brokers, they may play the part like, oh, we're, we, we care about the sellers, but they're trying to make money too. They see us as competition also. Um, but let's continue reading. Wes said, after talking to the wholesaler, she asked the homeowner to confirm the deal. She told me that they did in fact sign a contract. And I said, if you don't mind me asking, how much are they going to give you for your house? She said $35,000 and I was floored. Now, I don't know the area. I don't know what's happening, but let's continue a reading like if 35,000 is actually a fair price. Within a few days, the wholesale company had already listed a home for $89,000, okay? West believes it is worth at least 139000 And so that's probably as is. A realtor can probably list it and make this much. Wholesaler, they're putting on a contract $35,000, $89,000. Unfortunately, that's the case. I went to a house today from a wholesaler and they were listing it at $74,000. I'm like, okay, if they're listing this for seventy, now this house was in shambles. This house doesn't seem like it was in shambles if somebody was living on there in there. But if they're listening at 74,000, they probably got it under contract 60,000, maybe 50,000, and they're going to get more for it because, yeah, that area is kind of growing. But I think this is a little bit ridiculous. If you look at it, 35,000, they're putting it on uh, right now uh, on the market at 89,000, almost 90,000. What is that? That's a almost. $55,000, $54,000 spread on one deal. It's all like, just buy the house for $35,000, clean it up, and list it at one thirty nine. dollars Like, why even try to... Yeah, but anyways, th this is what happened. $54,000 is if they get full asking price. That's their profit. Doing nothing. According to Indiana Real Estate Commission, the wholesaler hasn't broken any laws. Basically, what they do is they find a seller, 
They offer them X number of dollars for the house, knowing full well that it's worth more and then go out and find a buyer. Bill Burns, a broker, uh, said there is a difference between a wholesaler and a flipper. They'll make 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars and never do anything. A true flipper buying the property, putting equity in the home or remodeling the home to bring it up to the today's standard, selling it, um, it. That's a little bit different. A wholesaler is never going to do anything. They're likely never even going to buy the home. They're just going to to be a buyer on paper and click to check the closing. <laughs> Although the wholesalers haven't broken any laws, Wes said they're finding trying to, they're finding it difficult. They're trying to help the Jeffersonville um, homeowner. Um, there, there's me and a couple of other realtors that have kind of jumped on this bandwagon to try to see if we can get something done. And I think this was the story: thirty-five thousand um, dollars. And the, the reason why I'm reading this story is to just show you all the state of the industry, what's happening in wholesaling real, es, real estate. You have a lot of cases like this. Like this is a, an extreme case, like where it, I mean, this is the capitalist country that we live in. And unfortunately, there are people who know this business and people who don't know this business. Now, for me, I try to give a fair price, you know, like if it, it would just be it would just be difficult. Like you have to think about that. Like how about if she offered the thirty five thousand dollars first before the wholesaler? Like what would what would that do? Like how how do you respond as a wholesaler? You feel like you're getting the deal of a century, of a century, but at the same time you're like you know what? I know I can give you more for this house. I'm gonna give you fifty thousand or sixty thousand or. Even seventy thousand, you sell it on a market for a hundred grand, you make thirty k. But you know, it is what it is. So apparently, um, they got a group together, and um, I think they they ended up getting the homeowner to break the the release the contract. So before long, the homeowner was released from the contract with the wholesaler, and someone else agreed to buy the house for significantly more. I'm fairly certain that she's re relieved. We got a lot more money coming to her. Okay, so let's say what happened. I'm pretty convinced, got involved. So I guess it went on the news. You know, the wholesaler was like, I don't want to be on the news. Uh, because up until hours before your story aired, their attorneys were conversing that they had a valid contract and they were not going to release the contract. So I guess they didn't want the publicity, the back publicity, and so the wholesaler just dropped it. So Indiana State Rep. Ed Clare is sponsoring a bill that would put restrictions on wholesalers and include a right of uh, rescission. Unfortunately, wholesaling is very widespread and out of control. This is a broker too, right? I, you know, we read about him. So that's something that's that's going on right now. Um, also defines the activity as a deceptive act, which could then be prosecuted. Wow. It adds that this is this predatory practice to the existing list of deceptive acts that are in stature. So that's what's happening in that area. They did pass a bill in Indiana. Um, and so I just wanted to talk about Kentucky because I think Kentucky, Kentucky was just around this area is around the Kentucky, Indiana, Indiana area. And I think it's going to um, bleed into uh, the state of Kentucky. Now, just the state of the industry in general, it's crazy what's happening. Like I, I'm hearing stories of, you know, investors having owners quick claim deed their house to them and they don't understand what they're signing. And then like lawyers and judges are like, well, you signed the papers, it's legally theirs, and they just let it go. And so I just think there's a lot of things. And something recently happened. Okay, let me. So recently, I got this note. Now, this note is from this company. Do not trust this company. You see that? Don't trust that company. Trusty Mitigation Headquarters. Now, these people try to tell me that I need to restructure my mortgage. 
okay? And I'm hearing stories of a lot of people getting letters like, oh, you're in pre-foreclosure or you're about your house is about to get foreclosed or even people who are actually in pre-foreclosures but they're catching up to their bills. These scam companies are still sending them these papers saying, hey, we need to do this or do that. Uh, you need to restructure your mortgage so we can actually lower your mortgage payment. And they sign a bunch of papers, but little do they know they're actually signing papers to give away their property. And so, and they, they even have like official equal housing authority stuff like this. It's just, it's just crazy. You see that symbol and everything like it's, it's wild. It's wild what, what they're doing. And some telltale signs. Number one, if you're in pre foreclosure, if you're not in pre foreclosure and foreclosures, this does not apply to you. Do not respond to these scam letters. Okay. If you're in pre foreclosure and you talk with your bank, then you should be good. If you're catching up with, with, um, um, your payments. And then number two is call your bank directly and say, Hey, I got this letter. Are you guys associated with them? Most of the time they're all like, we don't know who these people are. You can ignore it. They may not say to ignore it, but we don't know who these people are. The other thing is read the details of this because they gave me a date. Oh, foreclosure was recorded on this date. And this was January 5th, 2024. There was no indication of that. Another thing is that they actually have my lender's name, but it's not exactly my lender's name. Like there's a letter missing. They put like an LLC, but before that they have this weird writings. That's another telltale sign. Another sign is that they told me it's a property for which I rent. I don't own the property. I rent in this property and they gave me a letter for it. So, and they're like, oh, we can reduce your monthly rate, help postpone, postpone the date and things of that nature. You guys, this is the type of scam that's happening in the real estate industry. And because of these people, they're putting a bad rep to all investors, everyone trying to flip a property to own a rental. This is the sentiment that's going across. Realtors are pushing it and, and different things because I mean, unfortunately, I don't know if these are increasing. they probably are increasing, but the majority of investors are not scamming people like this are not scamming people, period. Um, and so we just got to be careful, make sure we we run our business with integrity and we do a good job. So I just wanted to talk a little bit more about what's going on in, in the industry. There's more things happening. South Carolina, too, they're having um, issues with wholesalers and thinking of passing bills and whatnot. So that may happen, too. So uh, I'll keep you guys updated on things. But um, if you all have any comments, please let me know what is your take on what's happening in this industry. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll talk to you all later.